Hey guys, it's Brandon from thereskinguys.com. I'm here today to take you guys through Sensor Tower as part of a post that we're just putting up on our website over at thereskinguys.com about keyword research. So Sensor Tower is the tool that we use to do our keyword research and, and actually does a lot more than that, but it is the tool that we use. It's awesome. Make sure you guys go check them out. They're over at sensortower.com. And you can sign up for a free account. Um, they don't charge you anything. And with the free account, you'll get, I think, uh, you can track one app. And I think it's up to five keywords, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and you can, you can use all the functions within here, or at least most of them, up to a certain extent. And then they cut you off. But it's completely free if you want to check it out and get a feel for what it's all about. And they also offer, uh, if you do decide to sign up for an actual account, uh, they'll give you 14 days full access, completely free to make sure that it's a good fit for you. So definitely go check them out over at sensortower.com. And I'm going to take you guys through uh, a couple of the sections here and how we use them. So first thing is we're going to start with the keyword ranking section. And we'll get to some of these other ones in another video. But for now, uh, this is a keyword ranking section. So for the purpose of this, we're going to be using one of the apps that we just recently released. It's called Crazy Beard here, and it's relatively new, so I don't have a whole ton of history. But for the purpose of this, it will work so that you guys can see what this is all about and get a feel for the functionality and uh, a little bit about how we use it. So up here on the top section is where you can sort of uh, track uh, the keywords that you've selected, and I can add additional keywords if I wanted to. Uh, for your app. So here are some of the keywords that we're tracking. Um, some of them I'm not sure what the heck that is. I'm gonna delete that. But um, you can see some of the keywords that we're tracking right now. And then it gives you a whole uh, subset of data here. So the first thing that it tells you is uh, traffic, iPhone difficulty, and iPad difficulty. Now all three of these are ranked on a scale from 0 to 10. Zero being, in terms of traffic, um, you know, not very many people searching for that word in the App Store. Ten meaning a whole heck of a lot of people are searching for it. And the same thing with iPhone difficulty and iPad difficulty. The lower the number, the easier it is for, your, for you to, to rank for that specific term. So I can see here for some of the terms, you know, if we look at Crazy Beard, for example, it has a traffic score of 1.5 and a difficulty of 3.4 for both the iPad and the iPhone. One thing that's um, you, got, you got to get a little bit used to is that if you come from an internet marketing background, we're used to being able to see search volume as a number. Um, and here we only get it rated on a scale from 1 to 10. So, you know, you may not know right now what a 1.5 is. Is that a lot? Is that not a lot? Um, and you really kind of got to get a feel for this yourself based on your rankings. But, um, you know, anything that's over 1 will have some traffic coming to it. And really, it's going to depend on where you rank. You know, it's hard to put an exact number on it. So the best thing I can tell you is to try it out for yourself. Um, and get a feel for what these numbers mean. And, and once you do use this for a little while, then it becomes a little bit more um, intuitive so that you understand what some of these, these numbers relate to in terms of downloads. After the iPhone difficulty and the iPad difficulty, then we get here into this iPhone apps and iPad apps section. And what this is, is this, this is showing you how many results are returned when you search for that specific term. So for example, if you go into the App Store today and type in Crazy Beard, 43 apps will be returned in the search results. Um, this is an important metric, but just a word of caution out there. Uh, make sure that you you sort of don't use this as your only um, your your sort of go-to when you're looking at how you know should I be targeting this keyword because um, it it really needs to be used in conjunction with the iPhone difficulty and one of the reasons why I say that is I know some people they'll see you know oh this the search term only has a hundred results you know I'm going to target it well anytime that we are targeting keywords our goal really is to be in I would say probably the top 10 um, search results that come back. So we want to be one of the first 10 apps that show up. So just because an app only has um, 100 results returned does not mean that you are guaranteed a spot in the top 10. And also, more importantly, it doesn't tell you anything about how difficult it is to get into the top 10. So what I mean by that is, 
I could have uh, a search term that's getting, you know, returning. Let's let's take this best as an example. There's, you know, 10,000 iPad uh, apps that are getting returned when you type that in. But if the ones in the top 10 are really weak apps that I think I can outrank for, then this number doesn't intimidate me. And conversely, for you know a, a term like Crazy Beard, where there are only 38 apps returned, if the ones in the top 10 are super behemoth apps, like Facebook and Instagram type apps, then I know that there's no way I'm gonna be able to beat out those apps for those top 10 spots. So for me, you know, ranking in the 11 spot is just not uh, not worth it. So this is it is important. Um, you know, you can use it for a lot of things, but just remember that your goal is to be in the top 10. So being outside of the top 10 doesn't do a whole lot for you. I mean, think about how often you, when you're in the app store and you're searching for an app, how often do you scroll past the first 10 apps or even the first few apps? I mean. Most of the time for me, I'm not going that far down. Occasionally I'll go down to maybe 15 apps, but I'm almost never going down farther than that. Um, so really you're limiting your visibility, but once you get outside of those top few spots. All right, and then the last section over here on the right, it shows your rank uh, for the app that you're looking at. So again, we're looking at our Crazy Beard app here, so I can see for that term we're ranking number seven um, in uh, the iPhone apps and number seven also on iPad. and um, these little green arrows here will show you your your progress on these specific keywords. So whether your ranking has increased or decreased recent, recently. So we just released this app. So obviously you're seeing a lot of green arrows as as our downloads are building. Um, but also you can see on some of these keywords that we're targeting, we're ranking you know pretty poorly for most of these keywords. So we have a lot of work to do, and that's you know that's going to happen a lot of times is that you have to tweak these keywords until you can really improve your rankings and really get a lot of these working for you and it's very much a, a trial and error um, but sensor tower can make this a lot easier on you with some of the tracking tools so that's what this section is all about uh, if we go down here on the bottom you can see uh, sensor tower actually tracks your progress on a specific keyword so because we just recently re released this a couple days ago I don't have a whole lot of data here but you know, the longer this is in the App Store, the more data I'll get, and I can really see what progress um, I'm making with the keywords that we're targeting. So I can see that when we launched this app on Tuesday, uh, we were ranking number six for the keyword Crazy Beard, and then we've dropped to number seven recently. And again, you know, we use this a lot when we are tweaking our keywords and we want to see what impact it's having on our rankings. Is it helping us? Is it hurting us? Uh, this is a great tool to do that for you where you don't have to track it yourself. Uh, it's all bundled here within Sensor Tower for you. And also, you, you can check also iPad history, same thing here, and I can select different date ranges or a custom date range, whatever you need. Then the last section is uh, over here on the right, and this one's really cool. Um, and this is one of the most useful um, sections of this, this ranking portion of the Sensor Tower app, and that's that this will show you for a specific keyword what apps are ranking in the top eight. So you heard me talk earlier about, you know, I'm most concerned apart from, you know, I don't really care most times about how many apps are being returned or anything like that. But what I do care about is how hard is it going to get or how hard is it for me to get my app into this top eight? Um, that's really what I what I'm concerned with are the top 10. And if I see that these apps are not very strong, then I know that this is a keyword I can probably go for regardless of all these other metrics. And if these apps are really difficult, then I know you know, uh, that might not be a keyword I want to target. So the way this works is I can click on one of these keywords. So I just clicked on the word crazy, for example, and you can see what the top eight results that get returned for it are. And you can also see us here ranking at 1,495. and uh, the cool thing where you can really get in and do some research on this keyword, if I was targeting crazy, for example, and I really wanted to rank on this, I want to know how hard is it going to be for me to get in here, or, you know, these are all apps that are ranking better than me, so what are they doing that I'm not? And the cool thing is you can go right here and actually click on one of these apps, and it will take you to the detailed section where uh, you can get a ton of information specifically about this app. So I can get the description, of course, how many reviews they're getting each day, their ranking in the uh, specific category here, some screenshots, and then also I can see 
um, their reviews and what their ratings are, where their downloads are coming from, and then their ranking history for whatever keyword. So here uh, they're ranking pretty high for the keyword wind and then also puzzle. So you can get a lot of information here about this app and immediately just by looking at this, you know, I can see they have some 3,100 reviews and they're rated four stars. So obviously this app is getting quite a few downloads here, um, which is helping its ranking. So, you know, you can compare your app to some of these apps that are ranking in the top eight and say, okay, you know, is it that they're getting mass amounts of downloads that I'm not? Or is it that they're using their keywords better than me in their description? Uh, and you can get a little bit ninja here and sort of really dive deep into your competition to see what it is that they're doing that you are not um, to try and improve your rankings. So that is uh, pretty much it for the keyword ranking section. So definitely uh, stick around. We're going to go through the rest of these sections here and give you a, a bit of a tutorial on how those things work too. But go check it out. It's sensortower.com and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you guys for watching our video. If you're at all interested in flipping apps, reskinning apps, or app development in general, make sure you come check out our website. You can find us at thereskinguys.com. We'd love to see you over there.